Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. In this video, I'm gonna cover a handful of trade examples. At this point, most of you are familiar with my work. I use a couple of simple indicators and moving averages on multiple time frames to, how, to help uh, find entries in stocks I like. I don't do anything fancy or use any proprietary stuff. Everything I use is standard stuff available on all trading platforms. All right, so let's go through a couple examples how I, not how I find trades, but once I find them, what do I look for in the charts? Um, how do I operate? All right, here is Fastly. It's been a good one. Um, so what I see here is uh, overall the stock was uh, trading in a range. Okay, the stock, um, you know, huge run up. Now it's been trading in a range for a couple months. I like to. I like to trade stocks within a range. I'm not going to just wait till it breaks out. If this stock breaks out, it's probably going to go up to the high, maybe even 130. That's would that would be a measured move. But I like to trade stocks within a range because you get all this very simple, uh, innocent up and down movement that is mostly noise to a trader who trades on like monthly and weekly charts. But that noise could be 10 to 20 percent. All right. So what I was looking for here is. I saw the stock come down, or it went up, came back down towards the bottom um, of its range, and then you got a resistance line over here. Um, you also have the, the the blue the blue line here is the 50, and I should mention that this is the daily chart, this is the hourly chart. I should mention that in each one of these because they change from from example to example. So its stock is getting capped by resistance, and it's also getting capped by um, the 50-day moving the 50-day moving average. So I'm looking to play either a breakout here, and if I don't get the breakout, then I'm looking to play a retest. So what happened is the stock does indeed break out, okay, right over here. Volume is super strong over here. Stock moves up, comes down and tests the 50, and then moves up again. So if I come over here to the hourly chart, okay, this is the one hour chart, this period here is this right there. Okay, let me get rid of those. Okay, so you can see the stock gets turned back by the hourly 200, 200, 200. Um, finally blasts through the 200, goes up, comes back down, tests the 200, gets a double test there, and then moves up from there. Okay, so a pretty simple sequence. I notice the range, uh, I'm not looking for a big move, I'm just looking for a move from the from the middle of the range to the top of the range, which again could be considered noise. I zero, z zoom in with a, a lower time frame chart, in this case the hourly, uh, and the 200 was resistance. I want to play a move through that, okay? And then we get a, a move up, we get a come, come down and double test, and then it continues up. So it's a really nice trade, and nothing really happened on the daily chart that's like out of this, out of the ordinary. Okay, we got a little bit of volume here, and that's great, but otherwise it's just an innocent move within a range, and it could happen over and over and over uh, and be very fruitful. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here's Workhorse. Um, this is a stock I've been in since, uh, you know, I rode... What am I doing here? So I rode I rode this up um, um, with a with a good position, and I exited. I took partial profits, um, but I kept my core position through this entire pullback. Yeah, it was a big pullback, but it was just a partial position. Came down, found support at the 200, uh, and I was looking to play, um, you know, to add to the position, add back my core position as it started to bounce. Okay, so what I see here is uh, you know stock bottoms off the, off the low, and it jumps here. Okay, and notice how it, it, it moves up here, moves sideways, and gets caught by the eight EMA. Okay, so this is the this is the one hour chart, this is the fifteen minute chart. So it gets scooped up, but you find support at the eight EMA. Um, MACD has crossed. Uh, stochastic is at a high level, it's oscillating at a high level. If I zoom in, uh, with the 15 minute chart, this is what I see. This this is a sequence that I look for on all time frames. This is kind of a W formation. Okay, double bottom, call it whatever you want. But as that as that forms, you get on the first move up, you get the MACD crosses, then you get a dip within the newly formed uptrend, and you get a kiss, and then you on the second move up, you get um, a, a reassertion of the trend. And when that and while that's happening, uh, the stochastic is basing and moves up. So rate around here so I call this my kiss and cross trade because you get a kiss right here and then this cross is over here uh, and then you get a reassertion of the trend at the same time that you get um, you know double bottom here so a stock breaks out of that uh, 
double bottom formation it gets scooped up by the 15 minute 21 EMA the orange line is the 21 uh, and then it rides it up so um, this is stock that I was in with a full position took partial profits held part of it and then I um, reestablished not a full position yet but I'm, I reestablished it uh, on the way up um, just in the last few days okay and today it's acting uh, you know it's 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 down but um, I'm still in I didn't take any didn't take anything off uh, even though the uh, we got a gap down okay so simple stuff MACD stochastic some moving averages couple different time frames identify a stock that I really like that I'm going to zoom in with intraday charts and find um, entries all right here's zoom info okay what I see here is I got a weak stock moving down okay but it's kind of volatile and I kind of like volatile stocks because they could pop and they can go like 15 or 20 percent in a relatively short period of time so um, so I see here we have a, you know, we have a bottoming pot, um, we have a, a base forming, okay, we have a positive divergence because here we got lower low, higher low, okay, also higher low here. So as this base is forming, we're starting to see some, a little bit of, uh, you know, the net, the downside pressure is starting to wane. So I'm looking to play, I'd like to get in uh, within the base and then I'm going to add and try to, you know, add to my position as the stock, you know, breaks out and moves up. So as this is as this is basing, um, you got some volume here, which is hard to see, but it's there. So let's go over to the, you know, this is the daily chart. This is the hourly. So let's go over to the hourly chart, and I'll show you what I what I saw here. Um, we see another one of those W formations. Okay, so you got stock moves up, uh, comes back down, and then moves up again. So that kind of sequence here, first you get the, the MACD crosses, Here's the signal line is like right here in red. So you get the MACD crosses, it comes down and kisses, and then it bounces off and goes up. And th at the same time you get this kiss here, the stochastic cycles down um, and gives you, a, you know, it helps time the entry. Okay, so this entry over here is gonna be within the pattern, which is good. I, li I like entries within the pattern because if it comes up and it gets rejected, then I can get out and still make money. If it breaks out over here, but then fails, I could get out and make money. But if you wait until the breakout, then you know a, a failure tends to you know means you're going to have, have a loss. Okay, so there's an entry there within the base with this kiss and cross trade on the hourly trade on the hourly chart. Uh, stock moves up, comes down in tests, and then moves up from there. And on, on the 15 minute chart, you can see it moved up, came down, did a double test. You know, here is the resistance line. So it basically, basically broke out, came down, did a double test on the former resistance level, and now it's doing very, very well. All right, next chart, Apple. Um, you know, Apple's drop from here to here is pretty big. You know, 20%, 25%, I forget what the exact number is. Um, but it just kind of shows you that... Uh, uh, that even super high quality stocks, could, you know, are going to undergo some pullbacks, and that's those pullbacks are great. Those pullbacks are a goldmine to to identify a fantastic stock which has an underlying bid, and is very likely to do very well. For it to give you a 20% pullback is an absolute gift. All right, so what I saw here is you see a positive divergence here, lower lows, higher lows there. Um, I see a basing pattern here with the stochastics. Everything is kind of shaping upwards. This thing is dropping, dropping, but downside pressure is waning. The bulls are starting to assert themselves a little bit. Um, and then, so I'm going to look to play. Um, so I want to, you know, I want to play a move out of this range and then look for, uh, um, you know, weakness after that to, to, to add. So the stock breaks out and I'd be looking to buy uh, weakness there, any type of retest. And then, you know, add to a position on the, on the move up. So what we saw here is you have, if we go over here, this is, I should say, that's the daily, this is the hourly. So I come over here to the hourly chart and you got like positive divergence here with price going down. Uh, got this base here with the stochastic. I, I really like these bases with the stochastic. Um, you get good signals when you get something like this, but I find you get better trades off when you actually have a little bit of a base and then the stochastic breaks out of the base. Okay, so we know that pressures, upside pressure is starting to build here because we got the divergence, we got um, the base here, you know, the double bottom base with the stochastic. Stock breaks out, um, 
stock breaks out here. And you know, something on you know, in each stock is going to be unique, and each stock to be unique at the exact time you try and play it. So it, in this case, what we had here is we got this, the stock came up here to the 50, it moved above, but then lost it. It got rejected by the 50 here, got rejected by the 50 here, came down, rejected by the 50 here. So the 50 was a strong. Um, moving average on the hourly time frame. So I really got interested right here when I got above the 50, formed a couple candles up there uh, to prove that like, hey, this is it. Like we have this downtrend here and the fact that it could finally get above the 50, establish itself up there. This was, the MACD was moving up, the stochastic was moving up. So there was my entry and now the stock is, uh, you know, doing all right. Okay, stock move from 110 to 115. That doesn't seem like much, but you know what, guys? That's all you need. Okay, in trading, you don't have to be good at everything. You only have to be good at one thing. All you have to do is find one simple setup that you can execute that works, and you're set. Okay, do it with 100 shares. Do it with 200 shares, then 300, then 400, then 500. And two years later, you're doing it with 5,000 shares or 10,000 shares. So instead of making 100 or 200, now you're making 15 or 20 grand. Okay, same simple setup, scalable and you're just doing the same thing over and over. Uh, you just you find something that works, you practice it, you get really good at it, and then you could slowly size up over time. You don't have to be a jack of all trades. You don't have to be good at everything. You don't even have to understand everything. Um, you just have to be good at one simple thing and then be able to execute that. And once you get good at it, practice. Okay, this is a performance activity. Practice, get good at it, and then you can slowly size up and, uh, and, and make a lot of money. All right, let's uh, move on here. Here's Chegg. Um, this would suggest the stock that went up and then down, and it's kind of neutral. But the stock actually was in a huge uptrend, co you know, coming from well below, well below what you see over here. So the stock went up. I consider this pullback here to to be a pullback within an uptrend. So what I saw here is I see, you know, a little bit of a falling wedge pattern. Okay, we got a lower high here. We have positive divergence, positive divergence, and then the stock breaks out right here on huge volume right there, which is really, really hard to see. So if I come over here to the hourly chart, you know, that's the daily, this is the hourly. Come over to the hourly chart, I see resistance at the 50, 50, 50, more resistance, more resistance. Finally, okay, so what I see here is as the stock is getting beaten back by uh, the hourly 50, Got a positive divergence here as this thing gun goes here. Okay, I got, uh, I like the double bottom here with the stochastic. Okay, so the MACD crosses, the stochastic crosses, and the stock surges above the 50, which was a moving average that held it back. Then stock comes up, it establishes itself here for a couple candles, goes up, comes back down, tests the 50, and then moves up. And now the stock is mostly trading in a range. You can see it probably better over here. Okay, so so far so good. The stock um, definitely playable. And as if you know, as long as the market doesn't fall apart, this is probably going to probably going to break out here uh, and continue up at least into the mid 70s. All right. Uh, what else we got here? All right, one more. Um, crowdsource. Uh, this is another one of the stocks that if you know if you look at the chart way back over there, it's a it's a big uh, it's a big rally. We got a consolidation pattern here. Stock breaks out, goes way up over 150, comes back down, uh, and now is consolidating. So what I saw here is I see resistance here. I see support from the 21 there. Um, if you if you want to play the breakout, you can definitely play breakout. I you know I'm zooming in over here looking for entries on the intraday charts. Uh, if you don't get that, when the stock breaks out here, it's going to show up on some sort of a list. It should be on your short list anyways because it's been a strong stock that's done well for a while. Uh, so when it breaks out, then you're, you're looking for, you, you know, you're zooming in with an hourly chart, 50-minute chart, something to try and find entry. So the stock goes up, comes back down, tests, and then starts moving up again. So if I look at the, this is the hourly chart over here, um, there was the re, there's the resistance level. That orange 21 came in over here. Uh, and what I see here is the stock breaks out, comes back down, tests the 50 at the same time it tests that former resistance level, and then it moves up again. Okay, and not shown here, but on the 15 minute chart, the MACD had already started scaling, moving up. The stochastic had already crossed and moved up. Um, and the 
15 minute 200 came in like right here perfectly. So even as this thing, even as the stock was basing in an, in an area where resistance was 50 on this chart was 200 on a different time frame was we were, we were told, you know, the green light was on. You can, you're, you're permitted to get in because, uh, you know, the indicators are starting to point up. Okay. Um, so that's that. Um, a lot of good trades recently, um, despite the fact that the market has been a little bit shaky and not uh, entirely clear what's going to happen. Um, nothing special here. I identify strong stocks that are trending up, and then I use a couple of simple indicators on multiple time frames to pinpoint entries. Um, find your trade. Okay, Find a single setup that works for you, get comfortable with it, and then uh, just practice and get good at it. And then it's just a matter of sizing up. And then, then you know, at that point in time, you can be a full-time trader. All right, thanks for listening. Come check us out at Lever Brothers, where we offer market analysis and trading ideas to the financial community. Also, check out my free masterclass in trading at the link below. All right, see you next time.